I'm Zach Drew, along with the Morningside Band. And now, direct from Gray Street at Morningside, here are your hosts, Jim and Lori Baker. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Gray Street. Hi there. We're so grateful to have you here today. We are. And I'm so excited to have the professor back. I am too. And we have the professor's wife yes. with us on the show Thank today. You. We have Robin and Dr. William Fortune with us today it's on our broadcast. Exciting. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Do not assume because we have a leader that we feel is going to lead effectively that we can all go to sleep. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. You should write that Close down. Close your eyes for a moment, and evil can march forth yet again. We will be facing crises over the next year. Some of them will be quite bad because we're finally confronting enemies that we're no longer going to be running away from. We had to show nerve the same way Ronald Reagan did throughout the 80s and finally brought the Soviet Union down. We have to bring down ISIS. We have to bring down terrorist states. We have to confront North Korea. We have to tell countries, don't mess with America. And it's time we stand up. It was almost too late. Wait till you hear what a little private conversation that was never meant for anybody to hear but Ronald Reagan and myself. When we get to the end of this little bit of tape we're going to show you today, I'm going to show you how much he knew and what he said was going to happen to America if we didn't turn back to God. And remember, okay? this was 1979. Yes. Let's go back to Ronald Reagan's interview. What about the religious schools in America? Would you protect them? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm one who've always believed that uh, the religious and the independent and the private schools uh, that those parents who are sending their children there should have either a tax credit or some tax deduction for the fact that they are paying an equal amount to support to anyone else to support the public schools and they're not utilizing that service they are sending their children to another school if anyone would figure out the cost that it would there would be to government if it had to suddenly yeah. supply the education that is now being supplied uh, through these schools they'd realize that it's a small amount indeed to allow uh, the citizen to take some tax credit for uh, the tuition. Now, Ronald Reagan was talking about that subject, and this is exactly what Donald Trump is asking for, is it not? Yet again, this whole lie about separation of church and state Ronald Reagan was talking about parents sending children to faith-based schools, parochial schools, should either have tuition help or tuition tax credits. What is wrong with that? Now, for example, my father served almost six years of World War II, and he got the GI Bill. He went to Seton Hall, a Catholic university. Nobody ever said a word against that. You want some of the best education in the country, go to a faith-based school. I teach in one. I, and when I was teaching on a secondary level, I taught in a school that was Quaker-backed. I taught in another one that was Baptist, and I spent a nightmare year in public education. Where did I see the best education? In those private institutions. Are they if, afraid of Jesus' name? You know, I think there's something more insidious. You go, what is the best elite school in Washington, D.C., where all the elites send their children? Sidwell Friends. It's a Quaker school. That's where the president's kids went to school. Great. Let them. I think the poorest kid in Washington, D.C. should have the right to go to the same school, not stuck in a school system that has utterly failed. And they you can't, are keeping parents you can, it, it, in the, literal slavery. The public schools, is it true they can't fire teachers? <laughs> I got involved in one or two of those fights, and I remember one in particular where the guy was drunk in the classroom. I filed a complaint with the principal, and this was in a public school, and I was informed that, well, you know, he's very senior in the union, and we really don't want to pick this fight, and he'll be retiring in another two years. Now, having taught in a public school where I remember uh, seeing a student, a, a teacher who messed up pretty bad and had been warned by the headmaster before, he was gone the next day, in the middle of the academic year. 
we as parents should have the right to decide where our children go to school. Yes. And Ronald Reagan said it in 1979. Ronald Reagan now talks about the Equal Rights Amendment. Governor, what is your stand on the Equal Rights Amendment? Well, I'm for equal rights. And as a matter of fact, as governor, we uh, passed several statutes uh, that eliminated specific inequalities and discrimination between men and women economically with regard to insurance and credit and so forth. I am not for the Equal Rights Amendment. It is not the simple cure-all that uh, many people have been led to believe. One thing that is basically wrong with it, the Equal Rights Amendment is not going to automatically force every employer to suddenly uh, have equality between uh, men and women employees. What it is going to do is take the decisions out of the legislature and put them in the courts. In order to get that equality, someone who thinks they're being victimized is going to have to take the case to court and sue their employer in order to get this change. And I think that right now, if the same energy was being expended to correct by statute wherever there is a discriminatory practice today, we'd be farther ahead than we are with that ill-conceived amendment. Do you two want to comment on that? Uh, a lot of folks might not remember that there was the Equal Rights Amendment uh, about supposedly eliminating gender bias that did not get through during that time period. Ronald Reagan is yet again right. How many times have we seen four or five men and women in black robes decide the fate of an entire country and how our culture is run, how our society is run, because it winds up in the courts. Next, Ronald Reagan talks about something that's always been important to me, and I've talked to presidents about it for many decades. Let's go back to Ronald Reagan as he discusses the state of Israel. Ah. Uh. Uh, the next question I have for you is kind of my, uh, my own belief, and, and it's, uh, it's the belief of a lot of Christians, and that is that we have an obligation scripturally to stand with Israel. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, are you comfortable <laughs> with that particular stand? Uh, I, I'm not saying that I want you to take a side between the Arab world or the, the Israeli world, but we feel as Christians, as Bible-believing Christians, that a nation that turns her back on Israel is a doomed nation. And we're concerned uh, with the stand that a president would take in relationship to Israel. Well, I have no trouble with this position that you've outlined at all. I believe that our nation has a moral commitment uh, to the continued existence of Israel as a nation. And, uh, and I actually believe that right now, if I may turn it to even a material uh, approach, it's a two-way street. Today, in that very troubled spot on Earth, where we know the Soviet Union is trying to push its godless philosophy down through that, that region, it is the presence of Israel with their experienced uh, military there that is a deterrent to the Soviet Union. If they were not there, we'd have to have forces there. But beyond that, as I say, I think it is a moral commitment. Yes, I do believe that Israel is intended to be a nation. Woo! Amen. I've been a part of a group of ministers for my lifetime, and on my broadcast time, and ministers would get together, and we'd always try to get to the president and warn him that if we turned our back on Israel, it would doom us as a nation. This is the first president that we've never been able to get to, to warn him about Israel. You know, Billy Graham always got into the presidents, got to talk to him. They always welcomed him. Everybody had a, a visit with, <laughs> with Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that Billy Graham always would talk over with the presidents. And I could name the, the religious leaders who would say, please, Mr. President, Here's what the Bible says, that we, we mustn't turn, uh, you know, away from Israel, and, and we must not divide 
their land because it's not our land. It's God's land. That's right. And so the exciting thing was that Mr. Trump, there, he had like a thousand preachers in one day up to his house. He has a big house, you know. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, and he has 50 advisors of, of people that I've known my whole life. The leaders in the evangelical world, the Christian world. And he listened as they said, we must stand with Israel. That's right. And he's made public announcements that he is going to recognize that uh, Jerusalem is the capital right. of Israel. Right. And nobody's wanted to do that right. hardly. In mm -hmm. fact, it hasn't been done yet. And if he does it, it'll be a momentous moment. And yet, for some reason, the same people that are fighting us on everything also don't like Israel. It's an ultimate hypocrisy. Ronald Reagan, we got to remember the context of the times. Israel was under siege. They had survived the 73 war. There was conflict in Lebanon. And Ronald Reagan made a very clear statement. America will stand with Israel. The current administration has utterly failed. And look at the chaos that is resulting. That's right. And the Trump administration's made it clear. We will stand with Israel. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's go back to Ronald Reagan. A little bit on foreign policy. What about our friends around the world? It seems like in the past, uh, we haven't been as friendly to our friends as sometimes we've been to our enemies. Uh, what will your policy be in foreign policy in relationship to these longtime friends of the United States? I'd like to visit Taiwan again. <laughs> I. You're absolutely right. I think one of the f faults of our foreign policy, in addition to it being vacillating, to it being simply reactions to events that happen rather than having a, a firm national or foreign policy, we have angered our friends needlessly, uh, betrayed them in many instances, and we have appeased our enemies. How in heaven's name do we justify uh, taking punitive action against some of our Latin American neighbors because we don't approve of their police methods or uh, their handling of their own uh, uh, radicals or dissidents. And yet at the same time, we just swear up and down that we must preserve detente with the Soviet Union where human rights are totally non-existent. It's hypocrisy at the, at the highest level. And I think it is time that the United States set out to reassure our friends and our one-time friends, that we are going to fulfill our responsibility as the leader of the free world, and we're going to help where we can with regard to our friends. And if they don't meet all of our standards, there's nothing wrong with us trying to persuade them uh, to agree with us in those standards, but there's also nothing wrong with us trying to understand them. If a country is beset by terrorists, and they're murdering, and they're kidnapping, and holding for ransom, and so forth, until they've upset the entire peace and the economy of, of such a nation. Can't we do more than refuse aid to that government because we think it's being too harsh to those terrorists? Maybe we should uh, show a little understanding and see if we can offer some solutions that will solve that problem without just throwing them aside and disavowing our friendship. You know, you remember, this is just before he was elected president. And do you remember the words, tear that wall down? General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. All I can say is the whining of Jimmy Carter 
combined to Ronald Reagan in one of the greatest moments in our history, standing in Berlin, which, yes, we had to fight Berlin. We had to destroy a fair part of it. We then rebuilt it. We stood by the people of Berlin. And finally, that incredible, iconic moment, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Yeah. That was one of the finest moments in American history. Mm. We will be right back after this special.